Welcome, my students. My name is Engineer Ezuke Felix, and I'll be taking you on PLC. And the full meaning of PLC is Programmable Logic Controller. And today's lesson will be on introduction to PLC. That is our first lesson for today. So I shall be taking you on introduction to PLC. That is Programmable Logic Controller. Now one may ask, what is a PLC? I want to believe that the industry in which you are currently, you have a PLC. So at the end of this lesson, I want you to talk to your supervisor or the person in charge to show you the PLC that is currently being used in the industry or the factory in which you are in currently. Once you are, once a company or industry is into production, definitely there is a need for automation. And if there's automation, then you make use of what? Of a PLC. What then is a PLC? Many refer to PLCs as an industrial computer. Some may refer to it as an, a solid state device. There are a lot of definition um, about PLC when you Google it on the net. Today, we are going to talk about the PLC and the definition of a PLC. I define a PLC as an industrial computer or a solid state device which continuously monitors the state, continuously monitors the state of input and output devices connected to it and based upon the written user program, it controls the status of the devices connected to it or controls a machine or processes. These are what the key points. We have outputs and inputs connected to the PLC, which we are going to be looking at at a much later lesson. And at the end of the day, it controls machines or industrial processes. Another definition of a PLC could be as a digitally operating electronic device which uses programming memory for the internal storage of instructions for implementing specific functions, such as logic, sequencing, timing, counting, arithmetic uh, control through digital or analog modules connected to, the, to it. Now, what then is the role of PLC in automation? A PLC can be adapted to monitor and control things like sensors and actuators. They process electrical signals and use them to carry out what? Program commands for industrial controls. A PLC also can be programmed into a machine into a standalone machine. So which means a PLC can be used to operate an industrial environment, many machines, or it can be localized to a particular machine. Uh, what is the importance of PLC? The importance of PLC cannot be undermined in the industrial sector. PLC is the heart of the automation process. The PLC receives commands from input and output devices connected to, to it. When it receives the input and output, it processes this information and takes a decision. And that decision is based on the user program. That is you that have written a program and stored in the PLC based on what you want the PLC to do. For example, you, you, you want to automate an industrial environment or probably even your home. And then you want, if someone comes through the door, you want the PLC probably to on, um, um, say, uh, an AC, okay? So you have to tell the PLC 
once it picks up a signal from the sensor at the door, that it should go ahead to switch on the AC. So this PLC works on the user-based instruction that is already in its memory. So these are ways which you can automate PLC by actually writing instructions. So that is, that, that is the PLC programming which we are going to be learning much later on as we progress. Now, there are basic building blocks of the PLC. The PLC must have an input to it, and then it must have a processor or the CPU, and then you have an output from the PLC. Now, the input devices and the output devices, like I said, we are going to talk about it much later on on the, on the lectures. Now, here you can assess the CPU through a programmer. So you are going to use a programmer. You can actually write to the CPU, that's the processor, or you take information from the processor as the time goes on. So we want to look at the history of the PLC, how the PLC came about. General Motors is an American company that was into the production of cars, but had some challenges due to then logics were performed by relays. So we call it the relay logic. So due to the nature of relay, relay being an electromechanical device, there is always moving parts. Now there are a lot of challenges when you are using relay logic. Apart from the cumbersome, the cumbersomeness of the, of the connection, it makes it difficult to troubleshoot. Troubleshooting was very, very difficult. So GM at that time uh, approached the engineers in the 60s. Is there no better way they can carry out logic control without having to you know, trace wires, go through the, uh, the, the challenges of you know, refixing and replacing relays? It was thrown open at that time a lot of um, contracts you are getting from the outside world. A lot among them was um, the first PLC that was known as Modicon. And this was designed by a man known as Dick Molly. Dick Molly. Dick Molly is known as the father of the PLCs. And a lot of designs we are at that time done. But the winning design was number 084. 084 was the 84 design of Dick Molly. And that was around the 19, 1969. So that was the birth of the first PLC. This new PLC or this PLC has to eliminate the disadvantages of the relay logics. These controllers eliminated the need for rewiring and adding additional hardware for each of the new configuration of the logic. This uh, new system of PLC drastically increased the functionality of the controls while reducing the cabinet that is housing the uh, PLC. There were a lot of things that also need to be in place because at that time, relay logic was being used. So they needed a design that will also help the engineers to actually learn less. That's the programming. The programming need, needs not to be too much different from the relay ladder logic, okay? And the, it has to overcome the wiring. A lot of wiring that is required, the design of the PS has to, to do that. It has to also be replaceable. So it's not something that when it damages, then you have to start tracing and then fixing. It's something that you can remove and then you replace with another part. So this was actually um, achieved by Dick Molly and the first PLC was known as Modicon. And what is the mean of Modicon? Modicon is called the Modular Digital Controller. So that was the first Modular. So the first name came from this. Modicon. So that's how the name came from. So that was the first digital modular PLC that was uh, 
produced at that time. So this went other, there are other historical dates, which when you uh, go through the slides or you go through this, the, the, the cost content that has been given to you, you will find out other uses of PLC. PLC uh, are commonly used in the industries, and I want to look at the kinds of PLCs, the types of PLCs that you may find in your industry as you progress. Now, there are popular brands of PLC which you can, see, you can find in your, in your industries. One of them is the Allen Bradley PLC. This is an American PLC, not popularly known as the AB PLC. So we have the Siemens PLC. There are other products in the market. We also have the Omron PLC. We have the Mitsubishi PLC. This PLC is the one we are going to be making use uh, when you come to the center. We also have the Allen Bradley. We also have the Siemens at the center. So we are going to try our hands on these popular brands of uh, PLC. Among other kinds of PLC that are used are uh, also Toshiba. We have uh, Fuji. We have um, uh, Texas Instruments. We have so many PLCs, even Festo PLCs. These are leading brands, but the ones that are popularly known in this part of the world are what I just listed. We have the Allen Bradley in the Allen Bradley kind of PLC. We have various types of uh, or models of PLC, and I'm going to just list a little of those. We have the SLC, Small Logic Controllers 500. We have the Micrologics PLC. That is, these are brands. These are other brands made by Allen Bradley. We have the Control Logics. We have the Control Logics. We have the um, Guard Logics. We have the Guard Logics. We have the compact logics. We have the compact logics. So these are different brands of PLCs made by Allen Bradley. Same thing for Siemens. Siemens also have so many types. We have the Step 7 200. We have the Step 7 uh, 300, 400, 1200, 1500. These are just different models of PLC. So we are going to uh, learn about uh, what they mean subsequently as we go ahead. These are step seven PLC and uh, the softwares that are used to power them as we go on to other lessons. So for Mr. Bushi PLC, we also have the FX series. Under the FX series, we have so many numbers, the 1N, the 2N, the 3Us, the 5Gs and all that. These are all different types of PLCs made by um, Mr. Bushi. And then we also have the Q series. The Q series are the modular brands of uh, PLCs that we have. Now, what then are the advantages of these PLCs over the relay logic? Why is the PLC popular? Why are we using the PLC today? Already, we have already mentioned about number one is the less wiring. It requires less wiring compared to that of the relay logic. So we need less wiring is required compared to the relay logic. So these are the advantages of PLC. There are so many advantages of PLC. I'm just going to list a few of them. So these are the advantages of uh, PLC. Number two, which also means that it is easier and faster to make changes. It is easier and faster to make changes. By being easier and faster to make changes, we mean that should you have a fault in the line, you can make changes by altering the program. Now, instead of going ahead to you know, trace the wires, make a lot of changes as per the relay logic or the electrical uh, world, you can just make changes, effect changes, either by using um, a replace, you can pull out a module and replace it, which is faster. You can also make changes in the program should you have any challenge uh, in the industry, unlike tracing the wires of the relay logic. Now, that also helps us, that brings us to number three. It makes troubleshooting, troubleshooting time 
is reduced. Troubleshooting time is reduced at the barest, barest minimum. The PLC will help you to even spot areas where you have challenges, where you have faults. For example, probably in your conveyor line, as you have a product you know, being moved and then detected by probably a proximity sensor. Now, as the product passes by, if the proximity sensor has an issue, it can be detected from the PLC. When you look at the program, you discover that the, the proximity sensor is not actually responding as the product passes by. So it can help you to say, go to line two, proximity sensor four, or the one on the conveyor belt is having a fault. So that helps you to, that reduces the troubleshooting time. So the technician can go there, isolate the proximity sensor, or whatever kind of sensor that is there, replace it, or if there is no uh, proximity sensor available, that's what we we'll call forcing, forcing an I.O. You can force the I.O. so that production can continue. So these are the things that we're going to learn as we progress. The um, uh, components are quite reliable. Components, the components are reliable. Reliable in the sense that the PLC can last for more than 20, 25 years, even without, you know, without having any fault. So some argue that PLC might be expensive, but in the long run, uh, PLC or automation is not an expensive venture because it can last for a very, very long time without uh, failure. The only thing that you can change and replace the batteries, that's by way of carrying out maintenance on the PLC. So I just talked about the, dis the disadvantages here because people, people say that basically disadvantage could be that the PLC is expensive. So they are looking at the initial cost of setting it up. But in the long run, PLC does, does much, has much more advantage than anyone could ever uh, envisage the disadvantage. Where are the areas of application of PLC? Where are the typical areas we can, we can find the PLC? Can we find it anywhere? So we want to look at the typical areas of whereas PLC, finding a PLC, or we can say uh, PLC application. PLC application, where can we apply a PLC? You can find PLC in uh, the manufacturing industry, which is a common place to find the PLC. Manufacturing industries. We can also find a PLC in the automotive industries. We can find it in the food and beverage industry. Uh, food and beverage industries, those things like maybe if you work in Coca-Cola, Nigerian brew wheels, all those areas you can find the PLC massively used there. It is even found in the automotive industry. You can find it in the glass industry. And so many other places. Metal to power and even the traffic light control. The normal traffic light controls. You can make use of PLC. We may not have advanced to, the chamber, uh, advanced to that stage, but in the developed countries, we can also use the PLC for traffic light control. We call it the intelligent traffic light control. So instead of having um, to pay people to control the traffic, you know, here, left and right, the PLC can actually do that intelligently. It knows where we have traffic, can give a preference to the area where there's much traffic, uh, much compared to where there's lesser traffic, and these are well organized and automated. These are areas where PLC can be used. Now, we also want to look again at the sizes, or we want to look at the, how PLCs are categorized, because PLCs, like I said, is an industrial computer. And as an industrial computer, it possesses all the functions and all the features of a PLC of a computer, rather. So a PLC has both memory, it has the input, it has the outputs, it has hardwares 
It has softwares. It has a, a capacity, memory capacities that it can handle. So just like the PLC, the PLC is categorized as we have the micro PLCs. Okay, so this is the PLC size and scope. So we have the micro PLC. We also have small, small PLCs. And these are categorized by the, the memory size, okay, and the number of IOs that they have, okay? So we have um, the medium PLCs. We have medium PLCs. We have large PLCs and then very large PLCs. Very large PLCs. Now, if you take a look at your screen, you will see a, a graph that is showing the arrangement of these sizes of the PLC. You can see there are areas where uh, it, it, it comes together, where they overlap. And we label this as A, B, and then C. So with this, we are going to talk about these areas where the IOs overlap, okay? So these small PLCs covers um, areas between 128 IOs, 128 IOs. By IOs, I mean input and output with memory cap capacity of about two kilobytes, okay? Uh, the medium comprises of about 2,000 and... 2,048 IOs with a memory size of about um, 32 kilobytes, okay? We have the large PLCs that covers about 8,192 IOs with about 750 kilobytes. And then the very large PLCs, which contains above that. All right, so this and this can fall into the same place. Now, the areas of the A, B, and C, like we saw from your screen, is the area where we call, where we have, we name them as mini, medium, and then modular. Now, a PLC can be either fixed PLC, can have this as fixed, we have fixed IOs, and you have modular PLCs. What are fixed IOs? Fixed IOs are PLCs that the IOs cannot be expanded. That is, it is not expandable. So if you have a PLC that has, for example, you have a PLC that has 32 IOs, what it means is that this PLC can have 16 inputs, as well as what 16 outputs. You can also have some PLCs don't have equal inputs and outputs, but the overall size tells you if the number of inputs and outputs a PLC can have. So if this is fixed, what it means is that you cannot expand this. So if you have an input that is more than 16, or outputs that are more than 16, it means you cannot go beyond that. So in the future, if you are if you're expanding or your organization or the industry or the process you want to actually control is getting beyond 16 or 32 IOs, it means you have to purchase uh, a PLC that has more than 32 IOs. That's what I mean by fixed PLC. Whereas a modular PLC is what we know as expandable. It is expandable. What it means is that you can go beyond the 32 IOs by purchasing other um, IO modules and connecting it to the PLC. Okay, when you connect it to the PLC, you can now have more IO modules. So those ones are expandable. So that is telling you about fixed and then um, uh, mini, and then the micro and then the mini and modular PLCs. Okay, so. Um, Example of a mini PLC 
uh, micro PLC rather could be uh, the Allen Bradley Micrologics. That's an example of a mini uh, micro, micro PLC. We have the mini PLCs, could be the SLC 500, like I earlier mentioned. And the modular PLCs are always in modules. So any PLC you see that has modules, in the next video, I'll be showing you a PLC that has a modular PLC, an Ellen Bradley SLC 500 in our next video, because our next video will be on PLC hardware. So at this junction, we are going to be ending the introduction to PLC, and then in the next class, we'll continue from where we stop. Thank you, and see you next time.